Hey, what's going on? Happy New Year to everybody. Uh, I don't ever wish a Happy New Year to anyone uh, because it's a new you, not just a new year. So uh, many times people um, say Happy New Year and say this is going to be my year. But what I'm going to ask that you not do is don't lie to yourself. Now, I know that sounds kind of harsh, but reality is so many people say this is going to be my year. And when you say that and you create New Year's resolutions and you don't hit those resolutions or those goals, and then we go to the next year and just kind of uh, mount those previous goals onto the next year, and then we still don't hit those goals, what it does, it starts playing on your psychological well-being. So that's not healthy. So what I'm going to recommend that you do is first ask yourself this question. Why didn't I hit my goals last year? Why didn't I hit my goals yesterday? Why didn't I hit my goals last week, last month? That's the bigger question to ask rather than just going to the new year saying, Happy New Year. Uh, this is going to be my year. But in fact, we have to put a strategy in place. We have to first go back and figure out what caused the problem. So again, we can put a band-aid on the problem or we can find out what's causing the illness, the ailment, uh, the lack of not being able to hit that goal. So I hear a lot of people at the end of the year, they always wish away the existing year uh, as, it, as it's about to close out. So it's like good riddance to 2022 and so long 2022. But let, let's, let's pump the brakes for a minute. Let's examine that. So it's like friends. I look at years as friends. I just don't have bad years because I take a look at everything that's in that year that's going to be beneficial and I learn from it. So again, it's like a friend. Does December 31st dictate your friendship? Does it mean that I'm going to get rid of all these friends, never see you again? So it's the same thing with every year. Every year is still a friend to me. I take what I learned from that year and extrapolate that knowledge into the previous, into the uh, following year. And then I learn, I grow from it. That's how you hit your so-called resolutions. That's how you reach your goals. So you can't just say that good riddance I'm, I'm, is nothing that I learned from that experience, whether good or bad. Even if it's bad, hopefully that puts you ahead of the learning curve. So in the next year, you don't have that same stumbling block. So it's super important that we uh, harness the lessons and the victories in the previous year and carry those over into the next year. So, you know, I don't want you to just not have a goal, not have a vision, but it's kind of like, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. So let's pick reasonable goals that we can hit, mile markers that is gonna create us to stretch. We need a goal that's gonna make us stretch. Don't just pick something, a low hanging fruit that you, you're definitely gonna hit that goal. Make yourself stretch, but don't make it so unrealistic that when you hit it, it takes impacts in your self-image, in your self-esteem, the way you feel about yourself. And then it won't give you the gumption to want to get up and aspire uh, to be able to hit those goals for the next year. So every day has to be effective, day by day. So I'm going to give you 10 tips for 2023. First tip is to know your value. That's always number one. Second tip is get out of a comfort zone. So many times we stay in this comfort zone, we don't want to grow, we don't want to stretch, it's like a rubber band. Anytime we stretch a rubber band, once we let it go, it goes back, but it never goes back to its original dimension. So you got to put yourself in a position where you can stretch and not just stay in a comfort zone. Number three, we want to be able to find a mentor or a coach. One of the biggest key factors that enables myself and my family to achieve the goals and successes that we achieved is that we got mentorship, we got coaching early. Because here's the deal, you don't wanna keep trying to figure things out over and over and over on your own. I'd rather learn from someone else's experience which becomes my learning curve at the expense of their time expenditure. So when you get coaching, when you get mentorship, you're actually buying time. You're speeding up the learning curve process. Uh, number four is you wanna um, stay open to change. So many times we get so closed minded, so tunnel vision, thinking that this is the only way it's gonna work. Well, here's a question we gotta ask ourselves. If we're 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years old, and the things that we have been doing have not been yielding the desired result, we gotta do something different. So you gotta be open to new and better ways of doing things. You know, I remember writing letters. 
you ask my kids now to write a letter and put it in the mail, they wouldn't know what to do. So again, we have to be open to change. We can't stay in our generational um, cemented thought processes. Fifth thing I want you to do is be persistent. You gotta stay consistent and persistent. You can't keep changing. So many times I see people jump around from uh, thing to thing. This week they're selling this. Next week they're uh, doing this, they're doing that, and they keep going from uh, rabbit to rabbit. Because here's the deal. When you chase rabbits, if you chase more than one rabbit, they're all going to get away. So you got to just take your time, focus in on that one rabbit, and go after it. Number six, show up early. Show up early. I'm an Air Force guy. Tara's a Navy girl. To us, 15 minutes early is on time. If you're on time, you're late. Any of you people that have been in the military, you know that saying. But you got to show up. You got to show up early. That's one of the key things that sets you apart from the leaders. You got to be able to get in the room. See, getting places early has gotten me in rooms that I wasn't supposed to be in. Getting places early got me uh, interviews that I shouldn't have been privy to. So you got to position yourself to put yourself in a position to win. Number seven, you want to avoid gossip. So many times we hear people just, wah, 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 wah. it's kind of like the Charlie Brown. You got to silence the noise. Focus. Mind your business to mine your business. M-I-N-D to M-I-N-E. You got to be able to mind your own business to mind your own business. Don't get caught up in the gossip. Don't get caught up in the he say, she say. Uh, people ask Tara and I, well, what, what are your thoughts about this? What are your thoughts about uh, Kanye? What's your thoughts about this? We don't have thoughts about it because it does nothing to improve or increase our network or our net worth. So you gotta put yourself in a position where you gotta avoid all the gossip. Um, number eight, don't be afraid to ask for help. So many times we, we just trudge along, we, we think we got it. We, we don't wanna ask for any help. We, we think that help is weakness. See, in school we're always taught, don't look on other people's paper, don't cheat off other people's paper, don't work together. So as we become adults, we stay in that same mind frame and we think we gotta do it by ourselves. We can't ask for help. But here's the deal, you guys heard it. If you wanna go far, um, whatever, go far and fast. If you wanna go fast, go by yourself. But if you wanna go far, you gotta have a team. If you are the sharpest knife in the drawer, you got some problems. You can't be the big fish in the pond. See, in certain ponds, I am the big fish for the people that I mentor, that I lead, that I guide. But I know how to swim from my pond to bigger lakes, streams, and oceans where I'm amongst sharks and whales where I can get knowledge that I can bring back to my feeder pond. So never be the big fish uh, in the pond. Otherwise, you're going to be a guppy in reality. So that's one of the key things you want to do. Number nine is you want to be able to build relationships. I cannot tell you. This is far more valuable than any cash that you have in any account. You got to have relational capital. Because relationships extend far beyond what money can do for you. Relationships will get you the money that you need. If you just focus on relationships, the money will come. I promise you that. I promise you. So you got to get it in the rooms with relationships. So again, it's kind of like I was saying, how I look at 2022 as my friend. I'm not going to destroy that relationship. I'm going to go back. I'm going to see what did you learn in March? What did you learn in June? Oh, what about November? What happened in November? What can you learn that you can use moving forward in 2023 and beyond as a friend, as a relationship? I build relationships with every year that has passed. And number 10, always be in the learning mode. You gotta be in the learning mode. Look, behind me, I got books. I got books over here. I got books down there. I got books on my desk. When I move my candy, I got books over here. I have books all around me. I've written 36 books. You gotta stay in the learning mode. You can't think that the stuff you learned 10 years ago is gonna last you moving into the, 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 the future. You gotta be open to new ideas. You gotta learn new stuff. You gotta learn new and faster ways of doing things. You gotta buy that speed and that time. That's how you're gonna get both time and money freedoms so that every day is a Saturday. You don't have to wish away five whole days, Monday through Friday, just to get to the weekend to only enjoy a day and a half. Because Saturday is when you're gonna run around and catch up on all things that you didn't do all weeks, like you just got out 
um, out of jail and you, you're you're trying to accomplish all these things. And then Sunday, you only have half a day because half of the day, the second half, you're worried about getting ready to go back to work on Monday. So you wish away five whole days, just enjoy a day and a half. What is that about? Let every day be a Saturday. When you have both time and money freedoms, every day become a Saturday. Today is Saturday number one for my family and I. Tomorrow will be Saturday number two and subsequently. So live your life on purpose. Live your life out loud. Make 2023 be powerful. Don't just say Happy New Year. Make it a Happy New You. All right, guys. That's my opening message for Q1 of 2023. I hope that you achieve all the uh, dreams and goals that you set forth for you and your family for this year. But again, don't compartmentalize and just think of it just being another a new year. It's just another day. It's just a day extended from December 31st. So continue the journey, continue working hard, diligently ask for wisdom, courage, knowledge, and understanding in all things that you do and you will achieve your goals. All right, guys, I'm Dr. Sean J. Harris, Make Impact.